Coca-Cola is the Junk Monk Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Junk Monk Podcast. I'm your host, Candace Sloan, who you know from Instagram at Hardens and Hard Hats. And I'm Noah, your co-host, who has a fever. If this is your first time listening, let us fill you in. We are picking up where the Drunk Monk podcast left off, hosted by Keiko Agena and Will S. Choi. I was a big fan of their podcast and was really sad to see that they stopped their show, so I decided to pick it up and I managed to find me a co-host. Will and Keiko did their show a little drunk, and we're going to do our show with a little junk. So I've got my two single gummy worms here, because I'm not feeling up to it right now, but two single gummy worms. Let's get a, give a little mic flick. You know those are vitamin gummies. Ew, why would you give me vitamin? Okay, wait, no. <laughs> it's good for me. It's good for me. That's why I got that. I mean, um, and here I have my Bogrito from Taco Casa. From Taco House. Taco Casa. Also, you must know I've seen every episode of Monk, and I'm a huge fan. I started watching it about 2007, and for the most part, watched it as it aired. I've seen the pilot episode and those we've done on the show. And a few scattered here and there in different seasons. So, Toby isn't here today, but we do have a new special guest, which is... Do you want to say? Yeah. Wait, no, I don't. You don't want to say? Because I'm indecisive, and I want to name him, but I don't know what to name him, so you'll name him. Oh, I thought we were calling him Little Monk. Okay. Okay. So we have Little Monk here. Which is, um, you may have seen him before. It was a pretty famous little bobblehead of Adrian Monk. So he kind of, you know, just bobbles his head. And he's oh. really cute. And we got him from eBay. So shout out to eBay. Hi, eBay. Um, so yeah, so Toby's not here. So there won't be any transitions. But we can start off anyways. So you oh ready? Oh my gosh, yeah. Here's, Here's what, what happened. happened. Okay, so this is season four, episode 12, called Mr. Monk and the Captain's Marriage. So here's what happened. In the open, we see a homeless man witness two men fighting in a junkyard. The homeless man named Gerald tries to run away from the man who killed the other man. He is able to get away and find an officer who is too late to apprehend the suspect. The murdered man, Chicklet, was supposed to be testifying against a Michael Karpov, so they suspect that's why he was murdered. While at the crime scene, Stottlemyer is on the phone with his wife, Karen, when a bold officer, Sharky, insinuates that he is having an affair with the captain's wife. Leland punches Sharky in the face, contaminating the scene, and all physical evidence is ruined. They interview Karpov, but it's a dead end, as he has an alibi. Also, we see Karen deny the affair, but Leland asks Monk and Natalie to follow her anyway. We do see her meeting a man, but it's not clear if it's Officer Sharky or not. That same night, we see the homeless man, Gerald, being attacked by the original killer. We don't see the killer's face, but Gerald does, and he survives the attack. He participates in a lineup, but it's ruined when Sharky is one of the perps in the lineup, and Stottlemyre comes in to the lineup room in a jealous rage and starts a brawl. After the lineup, the gang is all in the station when Karen shows up to check on Leland. Sharky starts professing his love to Karen's dismay and confusion. Monk then notices Sharky eating an apple. He's babying his tooth that Stottlemyre supposedly knocked out, but it's not on the side that he was punched, so Monk puts all the pieces together. Sharky was the killer all along. His blood was all over the crime scene, so he provoked the captain to punch him and contaminate the scene with his blood. Sharky was in cahoots with Michael Karpov all along and didn't want Chicklet to testify against him. Karen is ultimately innocent of the affair, but unfortunately serves Leland with divorce papers and ends their marriage. No. So that was Mr. Monk and the captain's marriage. And it is over. Aw. So, what did we like about this episode? What did we like? Okay, uh, well first I'd like to ask Little Monk what he likes. Oh, it, ask him if he liked it or not. Did you like the episode? I'm oh gonna go with a yes. Gosh. I think he, he liked nodded it. nodded to us. He said yes. He's so cute. I'll give him a little pet. I'll go ahead. Oh. His little Brillo pad hair. So cute. Um, so, okay, so for me, as an overall, you know, plot theme of what I liked, this episode, I don't know what the word would be for keeping my attention, like captivating or something, uh-huh. but it kept my attention the whole time. I was totally invested in this affair between the captain and Karen and the cop, 
And I could not believe what the cop was saying yeah. to bait Stottlemyre to punch him. Then Karen was so innocent. And then Stottlemyre doubts it. And then, I mean, rightfully so, because, you know, that guy was baiting him so much or whatever. Um, because also, they also have their issues. So it's kind of like, okay, I, I could kind of see it. We've seen it before in other episodes where they, like Monk was saying, they don't really get along. Not they don't get along. They have different interests. Yeah. Right? Um, so then uh, Stottlemyre has her followed. And you don't know if it's like a good idea or a bad idea. And then you're like actually into it. Like, where is she yeah. going? Who is she with? Who is that man? And then um, the final confrontation where the cop is saying that he loves her yeah. is crazy. It's insane. It's so crazy. So basically, I mean, that was obviously, I just recapped the episode again. But that, all of that stuff was sprinkled all throughout and it just lasted the whole yeah. time. So it was like, it kept your attention. It reminds me of the wine bottle yeah. in The Secret Santa where yeah. instead of the wine bottle, it's you're literally following this affair for the entire episode. So yeah. I thought it was great. That's true. Um I really, uh, like, this is just, you did an overarching, uh, like, I'm doing a little, like, scene like, okay? okay? So, Leland punches the guy. I really like that scene. <laughs> Noah was yelling. I was, He's uh, like, punch him! Every yeah. single, <laughs> every single line, punch him! Punch him! He did, and I was really happy. And I also liked how it was shot, which I'll get into more in my dislikes, because there's another scene that I really hated, how it was shot. And I feel like this one was way better. Oh, okay. That's yep. a good point. Um, I have my little quotes now. So um, I like when, I guess this is a scene where Randy is the one that's in charge of the meeting. Uh-huh. And he has the big pointer. Oh, yes. And the chalkboard. And he's he starts explaining, M is for motive. We have a motive. And so there's just a big capital M in the middle. And then he has all the things that are pointing to the capital M and just like explaining it to all the cops and they're just so going funny. with it. And then the captain walks in and he's like, all right, Randy, I'll take it from here. And he's like, oh, nope, I'm in charge. He's like, said who? And he's like, um, the lieutenant captain or something like that. I don't remember what he, what the he said. The deputy. The deputy. Chair. I don't, I don't remember. But anyway. it was funny. And then uh, he's like, oh, Okay. And he's like, but you can keep the pointer. Yeah. He's like, no, you've got it. You're doing a good job. He's he's, he's like, like, I can use my finger. Yeah. It's just as good. And then he says, <laughs> it's even better. Uh, it bends. And he's like. <laughs> Bending his finger. <laughs> so funny. It's even better. It bends. Um, you can really feel like the stress, like the fumes coming off of him. You know? Yeah. The whole, t- the whole episode, he's just at that peak. Yeah. Of, like, boiling. Like, he already boiled over by punching the guy, but you know he wanted to do so much more. Yeah. So he's just constantly in that state of anger. Yeah. Um, uh, that's my next thing, actually, is whenever he asks Monk and Natalie to follow Karen, and he's like, I would do it myself, but I have to go to anger management, <sighs> and that really pisses me off. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. And then when he um, goes to the meeting and the guy's talking about, you know, I went to this restaurant and this guy next to me, I was eating my dinner and his cell phone goes off and I made me so mad and I threw a plate or a couple of plates Yeah. and then Leland's phone goes off and the guy's like, are you being serious? And then, um, what does he say? Uh, oh, he I'm says, he says, I'm on duty. So I have to keep my phone on. And the guy's like, so you're a cop? So you think you're better than me? Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, because you're a cop? And he's like, oh, yeah. no, I think I'm better than you on general principle. <laughs> and then the, and then the, oh, they start standing up and all the angry guys are like standing up like about to be ready yeah. for a fight. And then uh, the, the anger management coach gives Leland a yo-yo. Yeah. And tells him to use the yo-yo. And I thought that was funny. So he starts... <laughs> He's like slamming it up and down, and it was really funny. Yeah, um, I really like the. Uh, this is my last thing. I really liked when Monk gave Leland Natalie's card instead of his, and I thought it was like that was that was my last thing. I just really I thought it was funny, and I thought it was really sweet as well. Yeah, what well, was sweet for Monk to not to not offer himself, yeah. but to offer Natalie. <laughs> Because, you know, he's he calls Natalie in the middle of the night yeah. and asks her to do, like, crazy, stupid stuff. 
So he's like, oh, look, Natalie's really great at getting calls. <laughs> that was pretty cute. Yeah. Um, my last thing actually was, oh, we already talked about, was the guy baiting Stottlemyre. And that was like the beginning of the, oh my gosh, like, I cannot believe he said that. Like, he goes through this whole thing like, yeah. oh, well, you, you know, maybe you should take more care of your wife. And he's like, what'd you say? And then he says, well you know, someone knows how to take care of her. And he's like, are you insinuating something? And he's like, where do you think she's at on Tuesday nights? Yeah. And he's like, are you kidding me? And then Randy's like, be quiet. That's an order. Uh-huh. And then he says one more thing to him. And then Leland punches him and you're just like, Oh, Oh my uh-huh, God. Yeah. Every single time. So yeah. that was, um, that was my stuff. I have three quotes and you already said two of them. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, my last quote or my first, and last quote, is he lied to him about where the crime scene was, and he said he was it was at a furniture store? A hardware store? Oh, this is an electronic store. Oh, yeah, an electronic store. Right? He's, he's mad, and he's like, I'm sorry, Monk, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry. And then he's like, how many times do I have to say sorry for you to forgive me? And Monk, like, no hesitations, like, six and I was like, you heard him six. And, and so he says his last three sorry. That is funny. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, so what did we not like about this episode? Oh, uh, gosh. The acting in the first scene wasn't great. And now there was the camera work, which what I was talking about earlier. I liked Leyland's fight scene way better than, like, how it was shot way better than the Karpov okay. fight scene. Because... I don't know, like, I think they were using, like, a weird, like, dolly for the uh, Karpov scene. And in the Leyland scene, it's like you're there, and it's a hand. It, not a hand, but, like... Like a man. Handheld. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. can tell. Like a cameraman. And it's, like, shaking. And it, I, I think it's just filmed hmm. a lot better. Um, I didn't notice that, but I will say, just, you know, benefit of the doubt, that... It probably, maybe possibly had something to do with the fact that they were trying to conceal the guy's identity. And so you couldn't really tell who yeah. it was. And so they're like, sure. I don't know what kind of, you know, machine that they used, but it was like they would cut back to the homeless guy and then cut back to the fight and cut back and weird. cut back instead of filming it a whole through mm. scene. Yeah. So maybe that might have something to do Which with is a how lot they more like immersive. In my exactly, yeah. yeah, cuz it's it's almost like it's trying to draw your attention away yeah. from who it was. Um my one of my things is like super random, which is I don't I don't really ever like in shows whenever they mess with homeless people or yeah, and or their mice. <laughs> and that seems like really specific, but I'm pretty sure that like cuz I mean it makes sense. Like homeless people either have dogs or they have mice. And I'm yeah. pretty sure I've seen in other, you know, just sad. like whenever they have animals, it's like even worse. Mm-hmm. They either like get murdered or picked on yeah. or something. So I don't, I don't really like the, you know, I do like that he survived though. And then um, you have Devo, the, the Devo, mouse who's my best friend being throwing around, been, I actually, been thrown around. I uh, actually met Devo in person. Uh, and apparently like the stunts that he did for the TV show were like really hard. Actually, he was telling me like when he get thrown out the window they actually stopped the take and took him out of the box. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, like an insider. Yeah, you know. Okay, that makes sense himself. because I'm pretty sure at the end that it says no animals were harmed in the making of this. Yeah. So what about the stunt where they Natalie and uh, Randy are throwing him back and forth? Oh, oh. He did that stunt. He did that stunt. He told me. Wow. So yeah. it was really his squeaking then? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I know, right? That's. He told me. That's pretty brave. Uh, they were tossing him around like no other. Shout out to He's Ricky like, the Rat. Me. That's you. Uh, you're always in my heart, man. Okay, so then they didn't use his real name because they call him Devo. But yeah, no, that's not a real name. Oh, okay, gotcha. You know, because why sense. would they? They don't call Adrian Tony. That's, uh, that's exactly. true. Very true. He's Devo. Okay, yeah. So. I have just why? one more thing. But why? What? What? Why is Karpov? Acting so suspicious. Oh my gosh. I hate that so I'm much. I'm a furniture salesman. Yeah. Look at that pretty lady. <laughs> <laughs> so rude to Natalie. And then he's like, he's like, see, this is what cops do to uh, uh, scare you. So it's like, kid. What did he's he like, <laughs> what, why? He's telling his kid, what did he say? Oh, that's called speculation. Oh, yeah. That's what police do when they're trying to scare you. I'm like, are you. 
You're telling this to like a seven year old. What are you doing? In front of the police. <laughs> in front of the police. W- like what? <laughs> I, it's so the, every single person I can't even think of an episode where the the criminal actually denies doing something and doesn't just say, "Well, you can't prove it." <laughs> I'm sorry, but if I committed a crime and I wanted people to think I didn't do it, I would be like, "I don't know what you're talking about." I mean, yeah. I wish I wasn't there. You know, like I'd act like I was like nervous, and I'd be like, "Prove it." For real? Like why? <laughs> All, every single one of them. How dumb would you have to be to be like? Well, I mean, if you figure it out, I'll tell you. I mean, like, like yeah. I, <laughs> if you figure it, it out, I'll it, tell you. <laughs> if you can prove it, I'll give you a confession deal <laughs> in writing. I'm like, wait, but isn't that a confession? <laughs> you say you could give me a confession? Exactly. <laughs> Bottle. So dumb. Okay, uh, do you want me to keep on going? Because, like... Do you have more I don't likes? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, the homeless guy reading scene, like, in his little abandoned apartment is really cheesy. And, like, the fact that you can't see the guy's face, and he's standing there for a good four seconds. And then he's like, oh, no, please, don't, don't do this, guy. And then, uh, he's like, I won't tell, I won't tell. Yeah, it's like, why couldn't they have got a better actor for this? Why, Why did they tell the guy to stand there? For a good five seconds, with his taser out. Uh, you're talking about the uh, the criminal, yeah. is the bad one. Yeah. Okay. All right, you can do yours because this is my last one. So. Okay. Um, so I didn't like how you kind of figured that it would all turn out in the end. Like Karen didn't do it. Yeah. She didn't cheat on him, and then it would. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how you could have left that without Karen still being hurt. That Leland didn't believe her. And it does, again, it makes sense that they are unhappy already because he says all the stuff that he says, like, you sleep on the couch and blah, blah, blah. I guess it's not even a dislike. It's just sad for Leland that his wife serves him at the end. Oh, yeah. That's it. I I think, I I don't want to say, I don't like that they're getting a divorce because they have nothing in common. So it's like, you know, if he, it's almost like he comes to terms with it before Leland has any idea that Karen's going to divorce him. And then she says in the end... He, when he says why, she says, you have to ask. That's why. Yeah. So. It's like, oh, she but a good she's point. right, though. Yeah. She has a good point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is my biggest one. It's an all bold. Why in the heck are they passing around the rat? The mouse? Oh. Yeah. Like, what? I put that in a plot hole, actually. I, just, I mean, it's not really a plot hole. Because, I mean, they could have done it. But it's, it's like... Why the heck would you be like, rat, Natalie, catch, Randy, catch. And the nurse didn't hear it going squeak, yeah, squeak, squeak, squeak. It was like the room was perfectly silent Golly, and the mouse was squeaking. I, I mean, but it's not and it's not Ricky's fault. Ricky is... Yeah, he didn't write it, obviously. Yeah, exactly. So, so, you know, he just, he, he just gets paid to do what they say. He so. told me he was actually really embarrassed about that scene. <laughs> and he was like, this is so dumb. He told me himself. I was on the phone with him earlier, <laughs> and he said, he was like, oh, you're watching it? See, we, while we were watching it, you didn't see me, but I pulled out a phone, and I called him. Oh, okay. And I called him, and he said, yeah, this part sucks. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe he could come to the studio sometime, because now we have a friend for him that's actually oh his gosh. size. Oh, my gosh. That's so, so high little, little monk. monk. Little Monk, would you like that? All right, he's oh, in. Oh, he loves it. All right, so maybe next time. <laughs> All right, so... So are we done with our uh, likes and dislikes? I think yeah. we are, right? Okay, and now so. it's time for... No, I didn't write anything down. Yeah, he's the, the guy. guy. Okay, ready? <gasps> he's, he's the, the guy. guy. Okay, so I have one person for he's the guy, and it is the homeless man. Did you... You didn't recognize the homeless man at all? Mm, okay. Oh, he kind of looks like my math teacher. All right. Well, that's a nice shout out to your oh math teacher. Oh my gosh, hi math teacher. Um, the homeless man is played by Bob Clendenin. Hmm, that's interesting. Mm. C L E N D. So that's Clendenin. Okay. Yep. So the things. Okay, he's one of those people that honestly, where you see him and you go, "Oh, that guy's in everything." Yes. Um, but I recognized him from Scrubs. Like my math class. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he isn't everything. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 
And then there was a whole list of other shows, like a whole, whole, whole list. But yeah. the ones that I had seen were that 70s show, The Resident, Jane the Virgin, The Middle. And then he had one credit for Gilmore Girls, which I don't remember him in that. But I've only seen Gilmore Girls once. Wait, let so. me see Let me see the paper. Uh, you said something and I was like, oh, wait, he was in that? That's a oh, that's show. 70s show. Yeah. What, 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 who was he? Hmm, I don't remember. I don't and remember him in, in that middle? either. Mm-hmm. I don't honestly don't remember. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, because there was so many things that I couldn't think of, like, what he would have been. I just yeah. know I've seen him a lot, but he plays a recurring character in Scrubs. He's one of the doctors, which you don't think that he would be a doctor. But, um, so, uh, yeah, that's all I got for He's the Guy. So, do you want to introduce a new segment? Oh, uh, yeah. Welcome to Junk, junk time. time. I want to do it like that. Oh, okay. Junk Time. Ooh. If you can't understand this, we're yeah, saying junk we're time. We're saying junk time. It's so what every... is time to eat junk. That's true. Okay. Yeah. So this is we're going to take a quick break. Noah's going to eat one of his vitamins. I already ate them both at the very beginning of the show. Oh my God. It's okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. All right. I'm going to snack on my little bagrito well, here. Well, now it's awkward. Okay. Why did, so, we, why did I not have to? eat anything on the one time we're introducing I know. Oh my God. I know but I have questions okay, okay. so so elaborate while I chew okay so <laughs> did you believe Karen at the beginning that she didn't oh, cheat definitely not she was like muy suspicioso and right she is that just me right when? she was suspicious like doing her uh yoga okay hang on First, I should preface this. Have you seen Karen Stottlemyre before? No, I was going to ask if she okay. was already occurring to me. Yes, her. so we have seen her at least two times before this. Okay. There was an episode called The Captain's Wife. Okay. So that has her in it. And then the in the first, was it the first season? No, the first season I think was, well, maybe these are both the second season. But anyway, then we have The Very, Very Old Man. Where she is a part of that also. And they fight in that. So that was like one of the... She doesn't fight with the old man. You know, her and Stottlemyre fight. If that wasn't clear. I have no idea but, what you're talking about. Okay. I'm saying, well... Well, because you haven't seen them. Yeah. You haven't seen the episodes. So, basically, since you haven't seen it, that's kind of why I wanted to ask. Like, if that was the first time that you had ever seen his wife, I could see how you would be like, oh, that lady's lying. Yeah, but you. But trusted her. we've seen her before, mm, so it's 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 an interesting like perspective on like oh Karen wouldn't do that because I was thinking you I what I was wondering honestly was whenever the captain comes up to her when she's doing her yoga and she sa- and he says uh, Detective Sharky yeah and she doesn't react at all she's just like blankly looking at him like okay and he's like does does that mean anything to you and she's like. What? What are you talking about? I felt I, oh. I I thought her acting was really good in the sense that like she had no clue who she didn't get there was no rise out of her or she, you know like yeah I think if you were cheating on someone and your significant other said that person's name you'd be what? like oh like you know what I mean nah. like you'd be like like a little like yeah. oh crap and well, then and then, cheating, and then try to play it cool but she's just standing there like what <laughs> I was like oh that's, that's a pretty good acting there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All right. Question and chew, Candice. Okay. Question and chew. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. More Noah talking. Less okay. me talking. Ha, ha, okay. Yes. I love that. Um, did you think that him and uh, Karen were a good couple? Uh. Whoa. That's a hard question. I. Because again, mm. you've only seen her once, so. No, just because like the information that Monk gave us that they're not really. Like, super close, I guess, in marriage. You know. Right. Yeah. Um, did you think that she was cheating on him with the cop when we see Monk and Natalie find... Did you think that that guy was the oh, cop? Oh, yes. I 100%. When, at the very, like, end scene. Uh, you want to take the picture? Oh. Uh, when they were taking the picture, I was like, yeah, that's Sharky. But later when he was like, actually, his left ear, and then Stottlemyre's like, I don't care about his left ear, monk. 
I was like, oh, shoot, that's not Sharky. Oh. Yeah. Because Monk's not wrong, yeah, so Monk's... that that's that's a good point. Are you a little Monk? You're never wrong. Yeah. <laughs> He's... And then, um, okay, so my last and final question for our junk time is, do you know how to use a yo-yo? Oh, yes, I do. Are you good at it? Or do you just, like, up and down? I'm not good at it. I'm not like those crazy... Okay, the... I have a weird side tangent, but at my school... They have the weird programs where people come and use yo-yos. Oh my god, yes. Yeah, they've been doing that since the beginning of time. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, what do these kids spend their time doing? For real. <laughs> and they I try would... to sell you yo-yos at the end. I d- <laughs> yes. <laughs> I totally bought one. <laughs> <laughs> it was the glow-in-the-dark one. <laughs> I think they gave us free ones. Like, cheap oh. ones. Yeah. Uh. Oh, no, no, they didn't. Because I got my yo-yo for my uncle for, like, not Christmas. Because that would be a lame Christmas gift. It probably was Christmas. <laughs> I like how you think it was a lame Christmas gift. Yet they dedicated a whole hour <laughs> to talk about yo-yos. Yeah, I do know how to use yo-yo. Not good. Like, at the the presentations, the uh, assemblies. Yeah. Where they, like... Walk the dog. I know how to walk the dog. The world. Uh, <laughs> and they do like some crazy like Eiffel Tower like Paris thing with their hands. Yeah. And they make the Eiffel they Tower. They do the rock the cradle. That one's easy. Oh, yeah. Where you just go up and you make the triangle and you let yeah. the yo-yo go through. That's easy. And then yeah. to walk the dog, you basically just let the yo-yo fall down and then you just drag it behind you and you yeah. just don't worry about if it's upright or not. Exactly, yeah. It just kind of drags. <laughs> it just goes... <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. All right, so are you ready for our, our next segment? I'm very ready for our next segment. Plot, Plot holes. holes. All right, what you got? Always crap. Okay. One. Uh, you probably wrote this down. Wait, you only have one or this is your first one? This is my one out of all of them, Candace. Oh, okay. Okay. So, like, what, you probably wrote this down, but Natalie doesn't roll up. Roll up. Roll up her flipping sleeves. Yeah. Whenever she's. I, I didn't write that down. I didn't catch it water. the first time. Like, wh- who does that? Who washes their hands? Who digs in fountains? Who goes swimming in their. Like, uh, what is that called? Your sweater? Yeah. Your sweater? yeah who's wearing, she was wearing a jacket. Yeah. So if you don't remember, Monk sees all the change in the bottom of a fountain. While they're following Karen, because he keeps getting distracted by OCD yeah, stuff, yeah. and he's like, there's $10 and three cents in there. Well, that'd be nice if there was just $10. And she's like, okay. Yeah. And he's like, like insinuating, you're going to do something yeah. about it, right? Yeah. And she's like, do you really want me to do that? And he's like, yes. It yeah. would haunt me. Yeah. She, it would haunt you, really? Yeah. It would. No, he says, it would haunt me. He gets super serious, and he's like, it would haunt me. <laughs> Then she says, fine. And so she sticks her hand in there, like I guess, you said, and doesn't roll up her sleeve. I guess because she doesn't give to pee poops, right? She just, like, sticks it in there. She's, like, happy, like, like sarcastic actions. Yeah. Well, I well, like I said, the reason that I think that they did it was to show that her arm was yeah. wet. So when the police go to arrest her. She's like, not like, she... these are just my pennies. But yeah. It's like, <laughs> Your arm's wet, yeah. lady. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, I will say my mouse one cause we kind of touched on it already, but it wasn't so much as the tossing of the mouse. Cause that, <laughs> I thought that was just blatantly like random, Yeah. but that Randy puts it in Monk's jacket. Yeah. What the heck? Okay. First of all, they're, own? first of all, they're lucky that Monk didn't tell anyone when he saw the mouse, uh-huh. like he could have freaked out Yeah. and the guy's like, you know, oh, worried about Devo, whatever. Uh-huh. So there's that. And then Randy goes and puts the Mouse in his pocket, he could have just put it in his own jacket pocket. Yeah. Oh like, gosh! If he didn't think that, m- <sighs> you were just you were just shout out to Ricky. Yeah, I was speaking his language. Yeah. Okay. Two. I thought you'd catch this one. Honestly, the headlight. Uh-huh. When he shoots the headlight out at the beginning. Why? You can't do that. You do- and You literally have them- to fill out like twenty paperworks for discharging your weapon. All of them are like getting down because they think a shooting's happening and it's oh god Stormer. Stormer. why didn't I just say that the whole time 
It's not Mr. Stottlemyre since there's two. It's Mr. Sm- Stott... Sp- captain. The captain. <laughs> <laughs> We've gone from Cleveland <laughs> to Stottlemyre to now the captain. Captain. Okay. S- like, they all ducked. He and doesn't even announce that he's going to fire a I'm weapon. I'm going to shoot my gun at this headlight, everyone. Everyone freaks out. And then Monk and Natalie are just standing there like... Not affected at all by a very extremely loud like, gunshot. Like, why the shot. heck would you do that? Yeah. And then my other Leland thing was the lineup. He could have thrown a rock. He could have thrown a rock. Well, that was, it was really far away. Also, the lineup? Really? The police officer is going to come in and ruin the lineup like that? For and he comes real. in and brings the number. That's and true. then he switches it with the guy. Like, they switch the numbers of the people, which I'm pretty sure already throws out the whole yeah. thing. It was funny, though, when Randy's like, uh, number three, quit attacking <laughs> yeah. number four. Oh, uh, number four, could you please step back? Uh, number, number, four- <laughs> number two, stop kicking. <laughs> stop like, kicking. As if he's, like, wrapping the fight. Yeah. That was funny. Oh, my gosh. I'm mad at myself. I literally hate myself right now. Why? Because you can't remember what you were saying. I can't remember what it was. Oh. oh. That sucks. I hate that feeling. That's the worst. Um, okay, so let's see. The officer... He so I guess we assume that he doesn't know what lineup he's going in for because he was obviously a murderer and Randy he tries to get out of it but Randy says no get in there it's an order so he makes him go do oh, the yeah. lineup I wasn't asking Yeah I wasn't asking right Uh-huh and so I don't know again if I was the murderer I maybe would have tried to say like oh uh, what case is it for or something yeah. so that I could either get out of there if I needed to, or if it wasn't my case, then I'd be like, okay, sure, fine. Why would he just walk? <sighs> he just walked he right in argued. there. He, he just mean, walks right in. I, th- I don't know. I thought that was, I would have, I would have probably bolted for any lineup. <laughs> for real. <laughs> like I'd be like, okay, fine. Uh, Lieutenant, let me just go put this down and then never come back. <laughs> yeah. And then just let them be like, dude, where were you? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah <laughs> like, yeah. let's let it go. That's true. My last thing would be, uh, if, uh, okay, I get that the crime scene was contaminated. Yes. With his blood. Yes. But if, say if this wasn't a whole spiel, like, uh, you know, on purpose, the whole reason he did it was because he's the killer. So what if it's not the killer though like what if if so i'm basically saying is if a crime scene is contaminated do they still not test any of the evidence to see if it comes yeah. back because what if it came back what if it got a hit like off three of guys. someone else yeah you're like oh there's three guys and then you're like or you'd be like oh there's two guys and you're like wait a minute there's two guys you'd be like wait there's a minute two people's there's DNA. two guys and there was three people and then you'd be like, Sharky, Captain. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, basically, that was my last one. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, Candace. Well, I, I want to do papers. a super smooth transition and then you hit the mic. Okay, so <laughs> Candace. How crazy was Monk this episode? Okay. All right. Out of 10, what? Get ready. Oh, out of 10, Sharky teeth. Oh, oh, that's actually that's a nice play on words there. Yeah. Um, I put out of ten stress yo-yos. <laughs> that's good. The first thing that came to my mind was the pennies, and I was like, uh, mm, mm. Yeah, pennies is a little broad. Yeah. Um. So, so what are we gonna do? Um. Okay. So, getting monk gets mad at the kid for using one hand on the monkey bars. Or whatever he was on. Mm -hmm. And then Monk tries to stop the kid and clean his face. Monk hates the rat. Or Devo. And he counts the pennies in the fountain. Those are my four. Okay, I've got... He wants the captain to apologize six times. Yes. I've got... He wants... Or he... I guess he doesn't want, but he's distracted by the headlight that the captain shoots. Um, He says the little girl's gonna blow. Oh yeah, and she he tries to. Did you already say he wipes? Oh yeah, he did. Yeah. But she said he says she's gonna blow, and he runs away. Uh-huh. And then um, he they almost lose Karen on the chase whenever oh, he's yes. looking through the glasses, <laughs> and then he touches the tree or the pole yeah. or whatever. So you're like, oh my gosh, Mom, get it together. Uh-huh. 
also during the chase, he, t- he accidentally knocks off the mannequin arm. Oh, yes. And then Natalie, he doesn't have time to put it back because those are actually kind of hard to get back on because yeah. they loop de loop around. And then Natalie, what does she say? She says, Are you really upset? It's a, oh, it's a mannequin. Oh, it's a mannequin. He's like, Why do you say things like that? <laughs> <laughs> he obviously has to have them even. Come yeah. on, Natalie. What is wrong yeah, with you? Real. And then so he almost lets it go, and then he runs back in. Instead of yeah. putting the arm off, which would take longer, he just takes yeah. the other arm off. Yep. So that's funny. And then um, he was mad at the homeless man for chewing meat. Did you notice that? And he's like, uh, I just have a question. So when weird. are you going to stop chewing that piece of meat? <laughs> That was so weird. That was I thought that was weird too. So you already said the mouse, but I thought it was funny when she when he says, "Let me tell you oh, <laughs> later. Oh, I'll tell yes. you a story about the Black Plague." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then that the last mu- the last uh, crazy muck moment would be when he incinerates the jacket after the mouse. Oh my is gosh! In it. So that's so true. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go out and I'm just gonna say it. Nine out of ten. Crazy moments. Uh, I, I did wait, out of seven. 10 what? Out of 10, are we doing mine or yours? Whatever you want. Out of 10 sharky teeth, it is nine sharky teeth. Okay, so how old do you, um, out of 10 stress yo-yos, a three. Mm, three what? stress yo-yos, yeah. Well, okay, so I know, I usually have a lot of things though. To be fair, I usually have a lot of things. Yeah, that's a lot. And then I usually grade it low. But I thought these things were like, he obviously doesn't like messes. Like, he obviously doesn't want the little girl to throw up. I mean, what's the craziest thing that he actually does here? The Uh, headlight thing. Maybe, but the captain does that. He's always distracted by something at a crime scene. Yes. I thought he'd be a little bit more focused whenever they were hunting for Karen. I thought he'd be a little... Because he was. He's trying to teach Natalie oh, yeah. how to do it. And then he gets all distracted. So I thought that was a little a little crazy. But I would think the craziest thing was that he randomly wants the captain to apologize six more times. Mm. Or six times. To me, that's the craziest thing out of here. You're weird. It's a... So. It's a okay, I put nine. Or I put seven, right? Okay. Then I changed it to a nine because I thought it would be too low. And now I'm changing it back to a seven. Because you put yours low, and I'm self-conscious about it. And now I'm changing it to a seven, no questions asked. That's it. Okay, so, and then also I put in parentheses, the real crazy person is the cop. Because, um, I don't know, Leland probably could have just shot him right there. <laughs> he, he went out on a crazy limb there to bait the captain like that. He said yeah. some crazy stuff. <clears throat> then he has the cojones to say those things in front of Karen, like to Karen, like, oh, I I love you, but it's not going to work. And she's like, what are you talking about? Oh. That's crazy to me. Oh, I also have a plot hole. Oh, that I says forgot, prove it. I forgot. No, no. <laughs> How are you going to prove that? Oh, what he says, what do you think Karen's doing on Tuesday nights? And it's like, how does he know that Karen's doing something on Tuesday nights? How did he know that? A plot hole. Okay, yeah, because I was, oh, that's such a great plot hole, Noah. I was waiting for them to say it. Yeah. Like, how he knew. Like, oh, he must have gotten to the captain something, something, and he knew. He must have, that we must be supposed to imply that he heard the on the phone. I guess, yeah. But, no. Because I feel like we heard the whole conversation. That's true. All he and says like is, yelling. I'm your husband. That's just, why I care. I'm not yelling. That's it. I don't even remember him saying her name. <clears throat> And no, then, yeah, he does say Karen. Oh, he does? Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. Because then I, because I remember when Sharky said Karen, I was like, what? How does he even know her name? <laughs> but, yeah. So, yeah, I have three out of ten stress yo-yos, and I think that the real crazy in this episode is the cop. Officer oh, Sharky. Oh, gosh. Rate, Rate this episode. episode. Ooh. Okay. Eight out of ten. Strong episode. Loved it. Hated it, loved it, and hated it. Summary. I thought now that I want to change it. Oh, dang it! Don't, please don't change it. Okay, still. Go. Unless you're gonna make it higher, don't change it. Oh okay. gosh, you put like a ten. Um. Well, of course I put a ten. 
because oh my. no monk episode deserves I'm less than a ten. Junk monk. Okay. Everyone. No, just just why don't you just do that? Let me do my thing, and then <laughs> you do, you think? You do convert it. I, I hate you. Okay, go. just convert it. Okay, okay. I'll convert it for you for all the people. It's an so, eight point five. Um. So, no episode deserves less than a ten. So perfect is two tens. Normal or like the lowest you can get is a ten, right? So then, get this. This episode is a 10.85. It's an 8.5, everyone. Yay. Yay. Oh, my gosh. Why is it an 8.5? It is an 8.5. Okay, so for a non-monk-centric show, uh-huh. it is fantastic. That's true. Um, they, they, you know, they don't always do that with shows about Randy or Leland or Natalie. It's not, you know, sometimes you're like, man, but I wish there was more monk. I didn't find myself asking That's for more true. monk. I was very That's enthralled true. with the captain. Um, the outcome of the captain's marriage was unfortunate. Yeah. Um, but man, the content with the marriage and how it all tied together with the story was, I thought it was perfect. Yeah. And also nothing seemed really like forced. I feel like we see sometimes where they force things where like if, you know, they have to add some type of tidbit. Okay, for example, so say if we had never seen the captain's wife or we had seen her before, right? And they always get along. Uh huh. And then in this episode, all of a sudden they don't get along. And you're like, they're like, oh, we've been having problems for a really long time. Oh. That would be something that they would force that you're like, really? Uh-huh. Why would they be getting divorced? They've always got along so well. Yeah. But it's, you know what I'm saying? So it's something that nothing in this episode felt so forced or out of place. That you're like, really? That doesn't make sense. Yeah. It was, I thought it fit perfectly together and it was perfect, like, recalls from the other episodes. Yeah. And I don't know. I thought it was great. I think it deserves props because it was a great episode. Yeah. Um, and you know what? Is that, is that all we have for today? Yeah. So I think we should roll the, in- no, it's the outro. <laughs> oh, God. No, let's not roll the intro. <laughs> it restarts, everyone. No. Uh. Kiddos, get ready. Get ready. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the Junk Monk Podcast. We'd love to hear from you, so please rate and review us wherever you listen to podcasts. Also, follow us at Junk Monk Podcast on Instagram. If you want to know more about Candace, she's at Hardens and Hard Hats on Instagram. And if you want to know more about me, Noel, too bad. Also, you can catch up on Monk with Amazon Prime Video. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. You'll thank me later.